Hello, I'm Mr. Howard. In this video, this is part two of looking at the three forms of quadratic functions. And part one, I will put a link to that in the description of this video, but we covered an overview of all of the three forms plus work two examples. So in this video, we're going to work three additional examples and look at uh, using our calculator to check our answers. Okay, so here is example three. And we have for the root form function, so they're giving us root form here. See video one on the different forms for description of that. But it gives us f of x equals 3 times x minus 10 times x plus 6. Find the vertex, roots, axis of symmetry, and the y-intercept. Then sketch a graph of the function and label it completely. Okay, well, they give us the root form, right? So that gives us the roots. And remember that the roots are opposite of these signs. So instead of negative 10, we're going to have a root at positive 10. So we have a root at positive 10. And they give us the other root right here. So it's opposite of this sign. So that's going to be at negative 6. So they give us uh, the two roots. Uh, to find the vertex, here's the nice thing about the root form. Um, think about it. I'm, I'm going to draw a quick sketch and then we'll, we'll erase it. But... Uh, we know that this thing opens upward because this term is positive. So um, we have a root at 10 out here, and then we have a root at negative 6. Well, we know our vertex is halfway in between those two points. So if we're um, here at negative 6 and at positive 10 for another root, halfway in between those, notice these are 16 apart right? They're 16 apart. Positive 10 to negative 6, that's 16 apart. So that means halfway would be 8 apart. So we can just subtract 8 from 10, right? And that takes us to 2. So our x coordinate of our vertex is going to be at 2. We can tell that. The other way to do this is just average 10 and negative 6. And you average by 10 plus negative 6 and divide it by 2. Just take add these and, and divide it by 2. That's just taking the average. So 10 plus negative 6 gives us 4 over 2, which is just equal to 2. Okay? So that's where the x coordinate comes from. The, the faster way to do it is just think about it. When they're whole numbers, it's just halfway in between. If, if they give you some weird decimal values or something, just take the average, and that will um, give you the x coordinate of the vertex. Okay? So I'm going to erase this uh, stuff uh, at least the graph here because I don't want that to confuse us when we start making our graph that will be hopefully a little more accurate. Alright, so if our vertex has an x coordinate of 2 to find the y coordinate, all that we really have to do is take f of 2 and see what that's equal to. That y coordinate will be the y coordinate of our vertex since we've already found the x coordinate of our vertex. All right, so let's do that. So that'd be 3 times, we're just substituting a 2 in for x here, 2 minus 10 times the quantity, substitute 2 in for x there, 2 plus 6. Okay, we're just substituting a 2 in there and there. That's all, all we're doing. Okay, so we have that's equal to 3 times 2 minus 10 is negative 8. 2 plus 6 is positive 8, so that's negative 64 times 3, so negative 64 times 3 is going to give us um, negative 192, negative 192, okay, so that means the y coordinate of our vertex is way down there at negative 192, so we're not going to be drawing this thing to scale here. All right, uh, the axis of symmetry, that's very simple. That's always the x is x equals the x coordinate of our vertex. So x equals 2 is our axis of symmetry. The y-intercept simply occurs when x is 0. So we're going to substitute in a 0 here and here and evaluate that. And that gives us our y-intercept because, remember, our y-intercept always occurs when the x coordinate is 0. So that's 3 times, uh, we're, we're just doing f of 0 here. So 3 times 0 minus 10 times 0 plus 6. So that's equal to 3 times negative 10 times positive 6. So that's equal to negative 10 times 6 is negative 60 times 3 is negative 180. So our y-intercept is at negative 180. Okay, so there is all of the information that we need. So now we can draw our sketch here. Again, 
we're not going to be able to do this to scale. So we'll just label and do the best we can. So our vertex is at 2, negative 192. So way down here. So we'll label that. We know it's opening up. So we have 2, comma, negative 192 down here. And we know that we have roots at positive 10 and negative 6 right there. So negative 6, positive 10 for the roots. And we know our axis of symmetry is at x equals 2. So we'll draw that x equals 2 right there for our axis of symmetry. And our y-intercept is way down here at negative 180. So negative 180, draw that in, and now we'll uh, rough sketch this thing in here. Now, that wasn't very good. Let's try that again. So we need to go through here. This still isn't very good, but you get the idea. And up like that. Okay, so there's our parabola, and we have found everything they asked us to find we have a y-intercept at negative 180 we have an axis of symmetry at x equals 2 right here we have roots at 10 and negative 6 and our ver vertex at 2 negative 192 all right so we can actually check this with our calculator so let's take a look at that just to make sure we got all this stuff right all right so i've gone ahead and put our original function in our y equals uh, so that we can take a look at this um, we know we can check the y-intercept quickly by just looking in our table um, when x is zero right so right here here's our y-intercept zero comma one uh, negative 180 and, and we have that correct um, we can look at roots here if we um, graph this thing we're going to need to I'm just gonna do a, a standard zoom so there's one root at negative one two three four five six and another root out at ten so we can also let's just use our table there so that would be um, we expect a y coordinate of zero at our roots our x intercept so negative six zero so that one's a check um, we can jump down here to uh, positive 10 for an x value we should see a y coordinate of zero there and we do so there's our other uh, x coordinate now to find our vertex I'm going to set a window up here so that we can find this thing so negative 10 uh, we'll make our x max 15 so we can see that uh, x intercept clearly at 10 our y minimum uh, our vertex is down here at a, a y coordinate of negative 192 so let's just make it negative 200 and y max uh, we can leave it at 10 it really doesn't matter so let's graph this all right, and the only thing that we need to find now is that vertex to double check that it is at 2, negative 192. So we do second trace. That would be a minimum value on this parabola, that vertex. Uh, the vertex is always either a minimum or a maximum when it opens upward. This vertex down here is the minimum, so I'm going to select that. Um, for the left bound, I'm going to use just an x value of 0 to make this faster. And right bound, I'll use a x coordinate of just 6. I'm going to type in a 6 here. Hit enter on the guess. I'm just going to hit enter. And it finds it at, notice sometimes your calculator has some rounding error, 1.9999. That's, that's 2. Okay, so the x coordinate is 2 and the y coordinate is negative 192. So that all checks out. All right, let's move on to a second, or a another example all right here we have an ex uh, another example and this one is a little different than the others we've worked it says write the equation of a uh, parabola that has a maximum point at f of 2 equals negative 3 and passes through 6 comma negative 8 so just like when we work with linear equations we need to look at what they give us so we know what form to look at to help us figure this thing out so they are giving us the maximum point here and on any parabola um, it either has a minimum or maximum and because this has a maximum point at f of 2 equals negative 3 remember that's just saying that the vertex because this the maximum in this case is going to be at an x coordinate of 2 because f of 2 means f of x so we, the x coordinate is 2 2 and then the y value there is negative 3 so they give us a vertex so we should probably use the vertex form this one right here 
All right, so we're going to work with the vertex form in this case. So they already give us that it's 2 comma negative 3. And if, if the vertex is a maximum, that means that this thing uh, opens downward like that. So we, we already have an idea of the shape, and we know where the vertex is. It also passes through 6 comma negative 8. So if we are using that um, vertex form, which is, I'm just going to write the vertex form real quick from our notes, f of x equals a, our steepness factor, x minus h quantity squared plus k out here. That is our vertex form. We already have the 2, uh, which is going right here, and the negative 3, which is going out here. And we also pass through this point, 6, negative 8. So really, all we have to do now is find, remember, this x and, and the y value is just going to be a variable. So all we really need to find is that a value right there, and we're done. And we can do that with the given information. We're just going to plug in this point for x and y, and we already have our vertex of 2, comma negative 3 so we're going to put a 2 here and a negative 3 here so now this is going to become um, I'm going to use this right here I'm going to write this again y equals a times and we already have x minus 2 because this is from our vertex remember this the h value is the x coordinate of our vertex squared and then it's plus negative 3 so that's just minus 3 okay so X coordinate of our vertex here, Y coordinate here. And now all I need to do is take this 6 and plug it in right here for this X and this negative 8 and plug it in for Y to solve for this A value. And we'll have this thing basically done. So I'm going to substitute that in. So we would have negative 8 equals A times um, 6 minus 2 quantity squared minus 3. So let's work that a little bit and that gives us 6 minus 2 is 4 squared minus 3 so that's negative 8 equals a times 16 4 squared is 16 minus 3 so I'm just solving this for a so now I just add 3 to both sides simple simple solving here so negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5 equals a times 16, I'll just write that 16a. So I divide by 16, divide by 16, and I get my a value is equal to negative 5 over 16. So now I have this thing whipped. I can go back in and now say that my equation of this thing, which they asked me for, is y equals my a value is negative 5 sixteenths, negative 5 sixteenths, and then I already had this part done right here because I, they gave me my vertex, so that's just x minus 2 quantity squared because my x coordinate of my vertex was 2, and then my k value was negative 3. Okay, so there it is, negative 5 sixteenths, x minus 2 quantity squared minus 3 is the answer. So that one was a little more difficult, but they we just take what they give us and, and basically work backwards. So let's check that in our calculator really quickly. Uh, we'll go to y equals, we'll put what we found it to be, so I need to put that fraction in parentheses, negative 5 sixteenths, uh, x minus 2 quantity squared, so x minus 2 squared, and minus 3. Um, so all I need to do is make sure that the point 2, negative 3 is in there. Let's kind of check it, so we have... 2, negative 3, check, and I also need the point 6, negative 8 to be there, and 6, negative 8 is there, so I am confident that I did that correctly. All right, let's look at one last example. All right, last example for this video. So this is going to be similar to what we just did. Uh, they are. It says write the equation of the quadratic function that has roots at negative 4, 0, and 2, comma 0, and a minimum value, minimum value, so that's the, actually they're giving me the y coordinate of the vertex here because a minimum value means this parabola is shaped like this and the y coordinate of this down here is negative 10, right? Negative 10 for a y value and then I just need to find my uh, x coordinate there. But they, they also, what they're giving me here though, they're giving me the roots. So uh, since they're giving me the roots, I need to use this root form right here this one right here from our first video in, in our notes because they give me that value. So um, 
the vertex, to find this quickly, we'll, we'll think about this. We need to use the symmetry of a parabola to help us. They already give us the y-coordinate of the vertex here at negative 10. And because we have the roots already, um, so we're, we'll draw a root right here at uh, 2 and a root right here at negative 4, we know that our axis of symmetry, which is our... Uh, which is the same as the x coordinate of our vertex is halfway between negative four and two. So what's if you're at negative four and positive two to go halfway, those are six apart, right? Negative four to two is six apart. So halfway is what we're looking for. So that's just three away from either one of these. So you could take two and go three to the left and that would put you at negative one, right? Negative one, we could also average these two. So I know my vertex now, my vertex is going to be at negative 1 comma negative 10 so that gives me a point to work with and they already give me the roots here negative 4 0 and 2 0 so really all I need to find now is just this a value and that's going to be easy to do because I already have my roots at uh, 2 and negative 4 and I have another point to substitute into the equation and I can just solve for a that just leaves me with one thing so I'm going to use y equals a times x minus root 1 this is the root form x minus root 2 and I already know I have an x value of negative 1 that I can substitute in uh, here and also here I have a root of negative 4 and 2 so I can plug in uh, I'm gonna plug in 2 here and negative 4 I need to do the opposite sign so I need to plug in a negative 4 here as well and um, then I have a y value do another color so we don't get confused of negative 10 that I already found so that's going right there and now I'm just gonna rewrite this thing so negative 10 equals a the only thing I don't know yet which I will find and my x I said I'm going to use negative 1 and then that's going to be uh, minus 2 in this case because I'm plugging in a 2 here minus 2 my uh, root 1 is equal to 2 and then plug in my negative 1 for x again right here negative 1's going in for that x and then I need to do opposite of the sign so it's minus negative 4 which becomes plus 4 because my other root was right here so it's minus negative 4 right here becomes plus 4 alright so then I have negative 10 equals a time negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3 times whoops times negative 1 plus 4 is positive 3 so negative 3 times positive 3 is negative 9 so I get negative 10 equals negative 9 a divide by negative 9 and that tells me that a which was the only thing I was looking for is equal to positive 10 ninths okay so now I can write my equation which is just y equals which is all they asked me to do y equals my a value is 10 ninths x minus my first root x minus 2 and then x minus this root so x minus negative 4 becomes plus 4 it's always opposite of the sign and I am done with that one and I could write this x plus 4 x minus 2 I could switch these it doesn't matter this means the same thing alright so let's check that in the calculator real quick and we'll be done with this video okay so I've gone ahead and typed that into uh, y equals so now I just want to look and make sure that my roots are in fact 2 0 and negative 4 0 and they are um, I also need to make sure that I have the point negative 1 negative 10 in there to get uh, to be more confident that I did this right and negative 1 negative 10 is in there so we check this thing with our calculator and everything checks out so we are done with this video I'll see you in the next video